So here in Queensland, when you're thinking about the materials for your home, you really need to understand the site and the environment that your home's going to be in. And you should choose materials that really suit those environments. For example, if you're in a bushfire area, obviously you need to choose non-combustible, quite robust materials. If you're on the beachfront, you're not going to choose materials that are going to be prone to salt spray and weather um, and bad conditions. Or if you're on top of the hill, obviously you need to really consider materials which are going to allow you to have resistance from high winds and wind mass on the building. It is very important to think about the environment you're in and the materials you're going to use to make sure that those materials are for the life of the building suitable and will last and have longevity. Embodied energy is basically the amount of energy it takes to create a product, to pack that product, to ship that product and to install that product and for the back end of the lifespan to demolish that product. So obviously you have to consider really carefully the type of material that you're going to use. A material with low embodied energy is more sustainable. We try and prioritise materials that are located closely to our home building site. I think at Breeds, one of the most innovative things we do around materials is actually not put them in where possible. Um, so looking at taking things out that are applied finishes and looking at using substrates that are fit for purpose instead. With joinery, um, where there's an option not to apply a finish, uh, we would look to use something like the farm ply joinery behind me or hoop pine or um, even just raw MDF uh, rather than laminating on um, a veneer or a laminate uh, because it just eliminates an additional finish. It eliminates the adhesive that glues those things together and it makes everything more recyclable at the end of the building life. We were lucky enough to have a beautiful rural uh, home we did once where we were able to send the landscaper out to search for natural rocks and stones off the property and then we reused those back in the construction of the home, particularly in the landscaping. And that gave us a really great connection to the site as well as providing a sustainable outcome. We definitely look to prioritise recycled materials when they're an option. Um, so the best materials to recycle are materials that are unitised because they can be removed from another site and relocated and reassembled at a new site. So that's things like brick, um, recycled timber flooring. Um, they can be installed um, by component in a new site. And beyond that, we look at including recycled content in materials. So if you can't get a fully recycled product, you can often get one that has components of its makeup that are recycled. And failing those, our third choice would be to specify a material that is fully recyclable. Um, so it might be new when it goes in, but that it can be completely reused at the end of the building life.